Well, welcome to Job Club, and we are delighted that you've joined us today, our first session in February. And uh, as we gave some pre-announcements, we'd love for you to tell us where you're from, if you're joining us virtually, in the chat box, and what type of work that you're looking for. We also have an in-person audience, and we want to extend a great welcome to you as well. Our agenda for Job Club is, obviously, we will have success stories. We always do, and that's such a, uh, a benefit of Job Club is to share that good news. We have a main speaker, and um, it, a, a note on the main speaker. We have had to flip our schedule, our speakers today, so some of you may have uh, been expecting April Spellman, but we are just so, so uh, pleased that our speaker today, Josh Taylor, could uh, help us out with the need to exchange those two dates. So we'll hear from Ray April Spellman a little later in the year, but we are delighted that Josh Taylor will be uh, presenting today. And thanks in advance, uh, Josh, for doing that. We appreciate it. Um, we'll be sharing, so at, sharing active job leads as well as partner updates and our next time at Job Club. Our mission of Job Club is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and to learn best practices for the job search. We meet the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find our schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So be sure to check that out. And I want to introduce our job club facilitators, our team, as we call it. Uh, I am Diana Doggett, and I am an extension specialist for the UK College of Agriculture and um, School of Human Environmental Sciences. We also have Caroline Francis, who is the Director of Alumni Career Services at UK Alumni Association. Amanda Shagney is also the Associate Director of Alumni Career Services. Nicole Waite is the Employment Specialist at UK Steps Temporary Employment. And we want to uh, also acknowledge Suzanne Smith and Sonny Saylor with the Fayette County Cooperative Extension Office, as well as Ellie Goodman and Grace Herring with UK Alumni Association. It takes a team to produce Job Club, and we um, we just uh, we feel like that we are a really really good mix to do that. Job Club is currently hosted in hybrid format. And that means that we offer the opportunity to join us in person at the Fayette County Cooperative Extension Office. So we extend that invitation to you. We also are available on Zoom webinar. And uh, in that status, we are, the chat moderator is available. So we want you to use that chat box. Now I did have someone, an attendee tell me last uh, session that they were hesitant to join our Zoom because they were presently employed and they didn't want their employer to know that they might be thinking about um, changing positions. So we want to assure you that you know you this is anonymous in, in webinar, and that's why we chose that that um, selection. And you know if you don't reveal yourself in the in the chat box, then you are totally anonymous. So this is uh, that's why it's Zoom webinar. I want to explain that today. And we're also available in Facebook Live, and that's a view only no chat moderator or job lead newsletter that follows because we don't have your registration. We also want to um, bring awareness to our free job club resource packet, and that's online. Um, we've been hearing feedback from lots of attendees that are utilizing this, this uh, great resource packet. So uh, take some time in the next couple of weeks and check it out. We have a variety of information on there, resources. We update it from time to time with articles of interest. Um, we have interview tips and um, <clears throat> resume review checklists. It, it, you just have to really go there and, and research it to understand how valuable the information is. Um, in addition, we want you to uh, consider joining LinkedIn Job Search, um, community, Central Kentucky Job Search LinkedIn. And uh, we call that our sharing community. 
and it's on LinkedIn. And again, in the interim of the two weeks that we meet, we place a lot of job leads that uh, may have become um, available in, in during that time frame, as well as other uh, information. And it just introduces you to uh, a group of people that are like-minded. So check that out and join us as well. We always want to um, emphasize that employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. And so we have in-person employers that join us um, from time to time and they have a one minute opportunity to share active job leads uh, with the group that obviously you'll be able to hear online as well. Uh, we want to re also uh, reiterate that you are in our emails later today. Uh, there will be job leads that have been sent and shared with the job club team. So you'll get a whole review of those when you receive the newsletter later on today. We want you to check out our job search related articles again in our email articles. And um, um, Lots of people always want to say, oh, I missed last week's. Well, if you did and uh, was not able to join us, our recordings and PowerPoint slides are available at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So you could go back uh, and, and review those, even if you heard them the first time, there's so much information you probably want to re-listen. So they are being made available. So now it's time to welcome our first timers. We love to do that um, and, and acknowledge that you're here. So in that chat box, just tell us if this is your first time. Um, we, we like to just uh, take note of that and see who, who may be joining us for the first time. You might even add uh, how you learned about Job Club. We, that's great information for us as we try to uh, continue to market uh, the opportunity uh, to, to participate in Job Club. So we'll, we'll um, let you do that, take a few moments to do it. And uh, I will note that you will, if, you is, if this is your first time, you will re receive a follow-up survey later today. And this feedback will place you in our notification system uh, for future programs notices. So scan the QR code below to complete that now. It's just very, very few questions, four or five questions, that's it. Success stories. Um, this is what motivates us. This is what keeps us going. Um, we're, we're in our ninth year now, and we, we can't believe that. But um, honestly, it's the success stories that has um, motivated us to keep on um, presenting Job Club. So chat box is a place to let us know as well any success stories that you've achieved. And uh, that doesn't mean that you've just received employment, got the job. It also means that you might have revised your resume. You've reached out to someone and have a new network. Um, you might have joined LinkedIn. You might, have, you might have had an interview or you have an upcoming interview. So let us know any of those success stories because they all lead to the ultimate success. We have any from our audience today to share? Doesn't look like we do. How about our chat box? Okay, well, um, I know I know they are out there, and typically they they drift in throughout our program. So, um, in in other terms, too, remember this is motivating to other job club attendees because sometimes they need to hear from other people, and then they realize that. Um, um, there are market successes along the way. And we do have some, Grace. Um, so June in the chat had an informational interview, which confirmed their plan to take a certification course. Very exciting. Awesome. Great. Well, I have one to share. Um, this always, again, thrills us when we get this. And we always encourage you when you get a job, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to share it with our audience. Um, and, and we do that with the, your permission. So this is um, from Jackie Shukla. And she says, I am starting a new position as a nurse at the Ridge Behavioral Health System in Lexington. 
Here are her words of advice, very short and concise, but how meaningful. Hang in there. Keep a positive mindset and keep working toward your goal. When it is time, the right job will come into your life. We hear that over and over. You know, perseverance is, is, is something that's equated to job club. We know that. But um, by using the right best practices, and, and, and resources and coming to Job Club, we feel very committed that you're going to get that job that is best suited for you. So congratulations to Jackie. We're just thrilled for her today. Well, now it's time to, for me to introduce our speaker. Um, again, we're just so appreciative that Josh could uh, change his schedule and uh, and help us today as we had to, uh, to, to flip our, our, uh, our programs. And uh, Josh Taylor brings over 15 years of experience as a higher education and communications and marketing professional. As an assistant director of the Graham Office of Career Management, he is committed to preparing Gatton students to achieve employment success as knowledgeable, world-ready leaders. Josh began his career as a French interpreter and has held globally focused communications and marketing roles with Disney, Hands-On Atlanta, and Rotary International in Quebec, Canada. He holds a bachelor's degree in speech communication and French linguistics, my goodness, linguistics from the University of Georgia and master's degree in strategic communication and adult and higher education counseling from Moorhead State University. He is actively involved in the Kentucky Career Development Association, where he has served as president. Josh, I'm going to go back and practice that word again, okay, and learn, <laughs> and learn my languages, but welcome, and we are so happy to have you. Thanks. There we go. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Diana, thank you for that kind introduction. And, and Caroline, Amanda, Nicole, all my friends uh, here at Job Club, thank you so much for the, the warm welcome and the invitation to be here. Folks online, thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm coming through fine and, and sound is where it, it needs to be. Excellent. We all will we'll, we'll dive right in. My topic to, to, to speak to you on this morning uh, is staying market ready. As we've heard from success stories and as we know folks who are here as part of Job Club, uh, the job hunt, the job search process, it's, it's a... Uh, it can be it can be challenging. It can be exciting. It is it, once you get to the finish line. Of course, it's rewarding. But there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts, and that's what I want to talk to you about here this morning. Uh, just as Diana said, I've I've uh, held various roles across the course of my own career, and and uh, I'll just quickly say this: when when I began my career as a young man as a French interpreter working for the Disney company in Orlando, you could not have told me that in the years to come, I would be living in Kentucky working as a career advisor. None of that was on my radar. And what I want to tell you is what I have learned and what I have learned from the many, many people I have helped over the years as a career advising professional is that doors open, sometimes doors will close, but that life will unfold in ways that you can't predict. I have found that out myself. And so for everyone within the sound of my voice, I want to encourage you to enjoy wherever the process is taking you. Uh, I, as, as Diana mentioned, I began as a French interpreter for Disney uh, and, then, and then transitioned to a, to a different sort of interpreting uh, and marketing role with Rotary International, which is a global nonprofit. Now, I happened to work in the education division in Canada and was anchored at one particular university. And that is what that is where my career in higher ed began, almost by happenstance. Uh, that, that's where Rotary placed me. And I have been working now in higher ed at different institutions ever since. But that is where I had my aha moment. And that's where I knew that I wanted to remain. And I've been fortunate now uh, to be able to, to have different roles in higher ed, but career advising is where I am now. I've, I've been now at the University of Kentucky for almost three years as the assistant director, 
of the Graham Office of Career Management. And I'm, uh, as of now, in 2022, the interim director of that office. Now, ours is a career center that works exclusively with business students at UK. And, uh, and I want to share with you just a little bit about uh, our philosophy at Graham, my philosophy on how to be successful while on the job search. And I want to start off this conversation by drawing your attention to something that I saw recently trending on LinkedIn. This particular visual was shared by IBM, and it speaks to a sense of what defines success when it comes to a career. And I think the visual does a pretty good job of showing us what many of us have traditionally been taught as a way to measure success. We see salary and job title. And the question from IBM was, are these the best measures of success or the only measures of success? And we see here uh, their thoughts on maybe a broader, more comprehensive measure of what it means to be successful and happy in our roles. So I wanted to show that to you because I will tell you, uh, I do believe that there are many ways to define success when it comes to job satisfaction. Uh, job title and salary compensation are certainly part of it, but so are all of the other things that inform who we are, both in our roles at work, but also who we are outside of work. We are, we are 360 degree individuals who lead comprehensive and, and complex lives. And, and I really appreciated this from IBM when I saw it. So folks, here's what we want to talk about this morning. There are four topics that I'm going to give what I call a 30,000 foot flyover view of, because I can tell you, I, I, I could give hour long lectures on any one of these topics alone. And I, I see some nods from, from my colleagues here in the audience. But what I am going to do is give you sort of the best practice flyover pieces of advice on these four related topics. So I'll move quick, uh, but I hope that it will be comprehensive enough and detailed enough to be meaningful by the end of it. So I want to talk about how do we, how do we de define job satisfaction and how can we know that we're going to land where we want to land? How do we protect our, our brand, our personal and professional brand, and, and promote it as we're on the market? And how do we think about the way we're reflecting ourselves on paper through things like the resume? And then last but not least, of course, how do we get ready for the interview? Now, at the Graham Office of Career Management, we have a uh, a guiding philosophy, if you will, that defines how we approach career management and career development. And what we've tried to do with this language is take something that can be a bit broad and, and sometimes even seemingly complicated and really distill it down to the basics. And it's this. We believe that successful career development and career management means that you're going to learn who you are, plan where you'll go, and get where you're going. Now, what do I mean by the learn who you are piece? This is helping individuals and job seekers understand who they are in a professional sense, what guides uh, their, their motivators, their interests, their personal style, their skills, their strengths, those sorts of things. And when you understand who you are in those respects, it gives you a powerful framework with which to understand where to go professionally speaking, which leads me to my second point. Uh, you know, at the School of Business, we have five different majors. And, and with, I'm sure within the sound of my voice, there are a number of educational backgrounds represented here this morning. Now, any one particular degree or discipline, not everyone, for example, who gets a management degree goes in the exact same direction. Any more than everyone who gets a degree in history is going to go in the exact same direction. And so there are options and opportunities. And when you work with career advisors, and just like my colleagues uh, behind Job Club, we are here to help you understand what are the options and opportunities that align with your education and your skills. It. And then finally, get where you're going. This is what I call the professional polish. Do you understand how to network successfully, how to manage your brand, how to write a compelling resume, get ready for an interview, all of those pieces. So that's learn who you are, plan where you'll go and get where you're going. And we believe at the Graham office that those are the steps that it takes to be prepared and to be ready. So let's talk about job satisfaction. I want to begin with some interesting numbers that come to us uh, primarily from Gallup. Gallup has been tracking job satisfaction in America among college educated graduates uh, for several decades now. Now, here is a surprising and, and, and to me, frankly, a little bit of a disturbing find. Uh, uh, 
for the last 30 years, this number, by the way, has been hovering between 70 and 85 percent. And these are among folks who have successfully earned their college degree and are now in the workforce. 70 to 85 percent of job holders are not fully satisfied in the role that they're doing. Now, as a career advisor for me, who primarily works with current college students, I see these numbers as a challenge and a mission to try to get as many of my students into that 25 percent who do land happily and confidently in a role. And I want to see that number expand. And everyone here this morning and everyone within the sound of my voice, I want you to be among that 25% who are happy in what they do. So, so to me, these numbers from Gallup are a bit of a challenge and a bit of a call to action because I think all of us as individuals want pride and respect and satisfaction in, in what we do and how we earn our living and who we are in the world. And this Venn diagram, I'm a big fan of Venn diagrams. And what you see here are some of the different moving parts of what we believe in my office it takes to land in what I call job alignment so that you're hopefully better primed to be satisfied. Now, a piece of the puzzle is what you're good at. Uh, that might speak to your personal, uh, your, 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 your wiring, your personality uh, style, if you will, your strengths, your skills. Now, that's a piece of the puzzle. We also see here, you got to love what you're doing. Now, oftentimes you might hear career advice, oh, just find your passion and the rest of it will work out. I do think that your passions and your interests are a piece of the puzzle, but I do think it's broader than just that alone. But what you're passionate about and what you love and what you're interested in, we can get to that when we look at what we call your value motivators and your interests. I'll say a little bit about that in a moment. And last but not least, and this is the piece of the puzzle that's also very necessary to consider is, well, what's out there? I know what I'm good at. I know what I love. How can I connect the dots and find something where there's opportunity? So looking at market data and, and, and getting a sense of where the job market is and where are the industries, uh, all of this comes into play. And, and if we can get this into what I call job, you know, proper alignment, you are all the more likely to land in that 25% who, who are, are quite satisfied. So how can we get into alignment? At the Graham office, we call these the VIPs, the very important pieces, if you will, to self-awareness. Now, we got to understand what matters to us. We call these value motivators. We've got interests, we've got your personality, and we've got your strengths. And I'll briefly summarize what all of this is. So your value motivators, folks, this is a, a question of when I get up in the morning, what's going to motivate me and, and really speak to me personally and satisfy what I'm going after? Now, for some people, this might be geography. For a lot of people, being able to live and work in a certain city or a state is a value motivator. For other people, it might be earning potential. For some, they might say, you know, earning potential is not as important to me as a flexible work-life balance. Some folks are going to say, I want a job that affords me a great deal of structure and routine. And some people might say, no, that doesn't motivate me, but creativity and flexibility is what motivates me. So understand that we are all motivated in different ways. It's important to get a good sense of what motivates you, not your, not your sibling or your spouse or your, your parent or your best friend, but what motivates you. All right, so those are our value motivators. Our interests are pretty self-explanatory, but what do you like? For example, I work with marketing students who might say, as a marketing professional, I love sports. I would love to be a marketing professional in the sports industry. Meanwhile, a different marketing student might love the tech industry and wants to go into that space. But sometimes our own personal interests in areas of industry become opportunities to seek out. Our personality is our wire. You know, how, what makes us tick, if you will. And last but not least, our strengths and our skills, our talents. When you put all of this together, it really gives you a comprehensive sense of your self-awareness. So here on the screen now, I'm showing you briefly some of the common value motivators. For example, you might value creativity. You might value geography. You might value earning potential. But it's important to get a strong sense of, and what you see here, by the way, is not a comprehensive list, but it's some of the most common value motivators. And I challenge my students that I work with at Graham to maybe, you know, think of the top three or five value motivators that really are going to be important. All right. So that's my challenge is think about what are your top 
value motivators when it comes to your professional sense of self. And, and, and you could even then zoom in more carefully and think about well, what will a given employer allow me uh, to, to achieve? Um, for example, when you look at a particular employer, think about the size of that organization. Uh, what's the culture? What's the, the vibe, the energy, the, 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 the values of that company? Um, what are the, what's the benefits? What's the salary? These are the sorts of things to be thinking about about what you need, what you want, and what the organization offers. All right, I'm gonna make a quick shift now to interests. When you work with career advisors, we can, we can guide you through what this means. And I don't wanna to get too lost in the weeds, but I'll tell you as a career advisor that the world of work can be thought of as these six broad master categories. We can think of careers that might be a, what we call realistic or investigative or artistic. You see here the chart. And then we can zoom in on particular career roles. For example, um, what would it mean if you're in advertising or what would it mean if you're education? And typically roles have a little bit of two or three of these identities baked into one given role. And we as individuals tend to gravitate to two or three of these slices of the pie that you see here, if you will, um, and, and, and perhaps less so others. As it happens for me, I'm, I'm personally attracted to roles that are social, artistic, and enterprising. I'm less interested individually as Josh Taylor in roles that are more conventional, realistic, or investigative. S, A, and E that you see here are where my interests lie. But career advisors, we have tools that we can use with you to get a good sense of where are my career interests. For example, for me as someone who has high social interests, I like careers that allow me to help people. If you have high artistic interests, that might mean that you're going to gravitate towards a role that's creative and an expression in some way. And I'm not just talking about paintbrushes. I'm talking about it could be it could be music, it could be writing, it could be media, but anything that's creative. But again, getting a good sense of, well, where are my top interests as it relates to the world of work? Career advisors can help you sort that out. So if you'd like to explore further, get in touch with your friends at Job Club, and they can help you do exactly that. Very similar as it relates to personality. We use assessments like 16 personalities, very similar to an assessment perhaps you're familiar with called the MBTI. But this allows you to get a sense of what's my personality style. Uh, you know, and, and, and it, it goes beyond the scope of our conversation this morning for me to decode for you all of these letters. But, uh, but suffice it to say that we are all wired a little bit differently. If you have a sibling, you probably know that. Oftentimes when I'm working with students, I'll say, raise your hand if you have a sibling, and plenty of people will raise their hand. And then I might ask, keep your hand raised if, you're, if your sibling has a very different personality style than you do. And most folks keep their hands raised. You know, some of us are what we might call very extroverted versus introverted. Some of us prefer to approach the world with structure and routine, whereas other people prefer to experience the world with a great deal of flexibility and go with the flow and everything in between. So there's lots of different ways to understand our personal style. And I'll tell you, all personality types can do anything, but it's the way that you'll approach that role that can give you some powerful self-awareness. Last but not least, uh, strengths. Think of these as your talents. Uh, we at the University of Kentucky often use a tool called Gallup Clifton Strengths to help people understand of all the many talents that are out there, which ones are yours? And what I love about the Gallup Clifton Strengths approach is that it's a, it's a bit of a departure from the traditional developmental model, wherein we try to understand our weaknesses and then improve them. Now, we'll tell you there's value in understanding uh, where we have room for improvement. But a strengths-based model is going to focus on where are you naturally strong, where are your talents already, and if we invest in that, where can that take us? And this is just a quick shot. There are 34 different themes that become gateways to talent, and the Gallup Clifton Strengths Assessment helps you identify your top five, and then a career advisor can really help you understand, all right, taking these top five strengths as a jumping off point where does that create areas of opportunity and potential for me? So those are some of the ways that a career advisor can help you get in touch with, again, what I call your VIPs, your value motivators, your interests, your personality, and your strengths. So that is a piece of the puzzle. If that is where you need more assistance, or if that's the piece of your job search that you'd love to hone in on more, let the folks at Job Club know, and that could be an area of focus for you. All right, we're going to shift gears now to talk about personal and professional brand management. Your brand is your, your when people think of you, your reputation, your, your vibe, your energy. 
When they think you, what do they think of, professionally speaking? And you see now some faces that probably need no introduction on this slide. I think we all understand that these very successful folks that you see right here, well, of course, they've got a brand, both as personal individuals, but they're also representing their own organizations and companies. But just like these folks, you've got a brand too. Regardless of who you are or where you are and what you're doing, we all have individual personal and professional brands. And our definition at the Graham office of what it means to have a personal and professional brand is this. It's the intersection of how you see yourself, but also how other people see you. And I think that makes clear that there's a certain degree of this that we're not necessarily in control of, but we're going to try to control the narrative as best we can. And so what we put out there uh, helps define how other people see us. So your own sense of your VIPs can help you understand how you see yourself. And then we want to be mindful of how other people see us as well. And I would submit to you that your professional brand needs to connect who you are to what you want to do. And when people can understand, oh, Josh Taylor, he does X, Y, and Z, this would be a good fit for him. Just like they'll, they'll know for you, your professional and personal brand really helps people and helps you connect the dots of where you want to be. Now, the reason that I love self-assessment so much, when you use tools like 16P or Gallup Clifton Strengths, it gives you a vocabulary and a framework with which you can get a good sense of what is my brand. For example, is your brand someone who's very creative and energetic and inspiring? Maybe that's your brand and maybe you're thinking, no, you know, those kinds of words are not me at all. Rather, I'm someone who's detail-oriented and efficient. These are just two total examples. But when you, when you get a good sense of, I encourage my students, to, by the way, to come up with two anchor words. Think of at least two anchor words that you know are part of the, the professional and personal mix of who you are and what you have to offer, and you can begin building your brand from there. But these assessments that I've just described really do, again, give you a vocabulary and a framework from which to build. So start with your VIPs. Think about the experiences and the jobs that you've held in the past. Think about how other people see you. And this will help you get a good sense of, all right, this is what my brand is. And this is what I want to project and communicate to people around me. Uh, I'm not going to say much on this, but I, it, you know, it, it bears repeating often that not only do we create a brand in person through the people that we meet, but also now with social media platforms, we also have a brand that develops online. And you've probably heard everyone here in the room and in the sound of my voice, you've heard people caution you before to be very careful about how you project yourself online. I want to remind you of that, but I also want to tell you that social media and the way that you present yourself online can also be a powerful tool in your toolkit to really signal in all the right kinds of ways who you are and what you have to offer. And <clears throat> managers, hiring managers tell us, we work with hiring managers at the Graham office every day. And they once, once candidates are identified, most hiring managers do go looking for folks on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn for sure. Uh, but people will try to get a sense of, hey, is there who is this person online and how does he or she project and communicate? And so be, go, into, go into how you present yourself online through your social media accounts. Go into that with your eyes wide open, not just from a place of caution, but also from a place of opportunity. And I want to, to really show you that there's both sides of that coin. I mentioned LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a powerful platform hundreds of millions of folks all over the world are on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a way for you to, to signal your experience. It's a way for you to job search. If you're not using LinkedIn fully or effectively, or if you're aware of LinkedIn, but not terribly sure how to harness everything that it can do, talk to your friends at Job Club because it is a very important and powerful platform. Uh, it's a way for you to, to show your brand, through your experiences, the roles that you've held in the past. It's a way for you to connect to other people in your industry. And it's a way for you to job search, to look for jobs, look for internships. You know, advisors, if you're not familiar how to do this, your friends at Job Club can show you how to look up, hey, people who went to my school or earned my degree or living in the city that I want to live in, LinkedIn can show you what those people, where they are and what they're up to. And so there's just so much that can be done on LinkedIn. So maybe LinkedIn is, is the piece of the puzzle that you'd like to, to, to grow in and learn more about.
All right, we're, we're hustling here, folks. I now want to talk a little bit about resumes. Your resume, the way I say it to students, is that your resume is your tickets to the interview. Now, your resume alone cannot get you a job. That's not what it's designed to do. Your resume hopefully will give you an audience with a hiring team. If they like what they see on paper, they're going to want to hear more from you. So it is, it is your ticket to move forward in the process to get ever closer to the interview. But I want to ask you a question. And when I ask this, uh, this question to students, I get a range of answers. And the range of answers is completely understandable. And I want to ask folks either here in the room or online, but do you have a sense of how long a hiring manager is likely to spend looking at your resume the first time that she sees it? Any ideas? And, and we'll see if, if folks in the chat or anyone in the room, if you've got a, if you've got a guess. Two minutes. two minutes. I hear two minutes. All right. Uh, we have three seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, seven seconds. Yes, So, th and thank you for that. An absolute range. And every answer that I've heard makes perfect sense. And so there's a, the answer is, I'm going to, and I'm going to show it to you now, most hiring managers tell us that it's only about six seconds. Now, if you were, if you were feeling a bit surprised and perhaps even frustrated by that response, you are in good company. And, and it is understandable. Uh, it would be an understandable response to be frustrated by that answer because our resume is our summary of all the amazing things that we have to offer and all the things that we've done, the investments we've made in our skill development and our education. And you might be thinking, how in the world does it only get a six second glance? Well, there's a catch. And, and here's what I want to tell you because yes, it's six seconds, but it might also be several minutes. So here's how this works. The very first time that your resume is seen by the hiring manager, this is one of my favorite slides. People are giggling here in, in the room and it is admittedly a, a goofy image, hopefully to get this impression in your mind. Uh, but yes, the hiring manager, when he or she sees your resume for the first time, will give it a glance. And in that six second glance, the hiring manager is looking to see, does the person on paper seem to match what I'm looking for? Is it the right kinds of jobs that have been held in the past? Do I see the right kinds of skills and experience, perhaps the right education? But in six seconds, they're also looking at the format. Do I like the way it looks visually? Is it well organized? It could be written in a language I don't speak, and I'd still know if I like what I'm seeing. But six seconds, and if they like what they see in six seconds, they put it into the S pile. Now, if for whatever reason, if the format is messy, if it just doesn't look like a good fit, if there are typos, if the wrong kinds of experiences have been highlighted, they'll put it in the no pile. Now, once your resume is in the yes pile, understand that the hiring manager then goes back and along with the hiring team will carefully read the resume for several minutes if necessary. So it does get a comprehensive read, but you've got that very brief window of time to get in the yes pile. So hopefully that demystifies how it's both a glance, but it's also going to get the read that it deserves but you've got to get into that window. And so format and content are important. And again, we often give 45 minute workshops just on how to get this piece of it right. But very briefly, I want to tell you when it comes to the format, when it comes to the way your resume looks visually, I want to caution everyone within the sound of my voice to be very careful about templates. Templates are in effect a downloadable document that allows you to really kind of get the format taken care of through the, through the document itself. Uh, oftentimes, templates look very uh, visually flashy. They might have a nice pop of color, built-in style. That's all great, but here's the concern. Most organizations use what are called applicant tracking systems. We and employers call them ATSs. That's in effect a way of saying that a computer is going to scan your resume before a human being does. Most applicant tracking systems have a very hard time with templates. Some can't even read them. And I would never want a candidate to be screened out of the hiring funnel simply because of the format of their resume. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to build your resume from scratch in a Word document that looks a little bit more like now what you see here. 
it will survive the applicant tracking system 100% of the time. And it's what most hiring managers tell us that they want to see. And in this case, simple equals better. Now, if any of you are in creative industries and you've actually hand designed a, a, a resume, maybe using uh, software tools like Canva, and you really wanna show the creative design skills that you have through your resume itself, that's great. And there can be value there. I would encourage you to use that kind of a resume when you're handing it directly to a human being. So if you're at a career fair or a job fair, or if you're able to email it as an attachment human to human, you're in great shape. But if ever you're in a click here to apply scenario, I would want you to have an alternative version of your resume that's going to be more appropriate for an ATS. Does that make sense? I see some thumbs up. So, so you, I'm not telling you never to use a template. I want you to be aware of the scenarios when you want to part particularly have an alternative. So that is a very quick thing on format. Now, when it comes to content, I want to tell you the way that you write your bullet points matter. And we actually have a recruiter at the Graham office. She's with Goldman Sachs. She calls this her so what test. And she, this is a quote from her. She told me I could use this forevermore and always give her credit. But she calls this her so what test. She says, every bullet point I see needs to pass the so what test. And here is a very quick, I mean, she's, she's pretty blunt about it. But y'all, here is a very quick formula that you can use to make Make sure that your bullet points are passing the so what test. Your bullet points are where you talk about your experiences on your resume. And we call it the car model. Uh, I've got colleagues that might call this the ACE method, but variations on the same theme. But the car model is in essence, context, action, results. People who might call this the ACE method are going to say actions, challenges, and end results. But it's basically an action plus results model. Now watch what happens here. And the colors here are merely simply to help illustrate a point. But First, we need some context. This bullet point might be about teamwork. The bullet point could be about problem solving. The bullet point could be about leadership, but we're first gonna choose a good verb. So if I'm gonna try to get across teamwork, I'm gonna need to reach for a verb like partnered, assisted, collaborated. See how that works? So first we need a context. Think of that as the storyline of your bullet point. But then we need to go into actions. Most resume writers stay in action mode. For example, most resume writers might simply say, collaborated with colleagues to develop a unique marketing campaign, and then they stop. Now, if you stop in action mode, Rochelle is going to say, so what? Rochelle being our friend from Goldman Sachs. And she's going to say, so what? Because she'll say, well, you told me you did a marketing campaign. I have no idea if it was a disaster. Did it fail? Did it succeed? Did it move your numbers? Did it result in new clients or new sales? Hopefully it did, but you've given me no indication that it did. And this is where the R comes into place. So we want good context. Action comes easy for most folks, but it's the results that's being left off. So watch what happened with this bullet point when we extended it out. Develop, you know, collaborate with colleagues to develop a unique marketing campaign that increased annual product sales by 55%. So folks, anytime that you can create metrics, number of customers served, dollar amounts, that always will make it pop. But trust and believe there is a result behind everything you do. If you are answering phones, there's a result. You're helping build customer loyalty and delivering exceptional customer service. If you are bagging groceries at Kroger, the result is that you are, you are saving your customers valuable time. Maybe if, you're, if, you're, if you right now are a delivery driver during the pandemic, you're helping protect people's safety. You, there, there are results behind everything that we do. And so I often work with students who will say, well, I don't understand the result behind my action, but we'll help you find it. So talk to your career advisors, talk to the folks at Job Club, we work with, with job seekers every day, and we can help you find the R that needs to live right behind the action of your bullet points if it's not there already. All right, y'all, like I said, your resume is your ticket to the interview. Let's talk very briefly now about interview strategy. Again, we do 45-minute workshops just on interviews, just on resumes. My purpose this morning is to give you a very quick and comprehensive overview, hopefully to help you identify maybe where in this process you want to lean in with a little bit more intention. But when you head into an interview, 
First, my first piece of advice is you need to know yourself, know your story, know your goals, know who you've been and where you want to go. So be, be fluent in your own VIPs, be fluent in the goals that you want to achieve and be ready to talk about your strengths and your skills with action, with results in all the right ways. And I'll say a little bit more, this, uh, more about this as we go, but this is the piece I don't want you to neglect. I also want you to know the employer. Now, this employer hasn't hired you yet, so you're not expected to be you know, fluent in all things about this company, but I want you to have done enough homework and enough research to show the members of the hiring team that you understand who that company is and why you want to be a part of it. Now, on Monday, I'm going to use two companies as an example. On Monday, you might be interviewing with AT&T. And that's great. And on Wednesday, you might be interviewing with Verizon, and that's great too. But when you're in front of AT&T, speak a little bit of AT&T's language. When you're in front of Verizon, shift gears a little bit and speak a little bit of Verizon's language. So go to these companies' websites. Spend a little bit of time reading about their About Us portion of their website. Read about their, how they were founded. How do they see themselves differentiated from their competition? And we actually have tools and resources at the University of Kentucky that can help you do a little bit of digging and get a little bit of insights into these companies. But you don't want to give the impression that, you know, I've got 10 interviews lined up and it's all just kind of a blur. You might have 10 interviews lined up and that's great. But when you're in front of that company, do your best to project, I want to be a part of your team. I know who you are and how I can be a part of it. And that piece is sometimes neglected by folks. So remember that this is about them too. And, and it, it really needs to be a two-way conversation. Now, you will probably get between 10, 15, maybe 20 questions in an interview. Most tend to be around 10 questions in an interview. And listen, there could be lots of different styles of questions, but I want to tell you this, more often than not, interview questions boil down to these three master themes. Can this candidate produce? Can this candidate problem solve? And can this candidate be a team player? Now, the production piece is going to look different. If I'm hiring someone to be an accountant, I need that accountant to be able to produce numbers and be comfortable with technology and be detail-oriented. And if I'm trying to hire someone to, to, you know, to, I don't know, create advertising campaigns that are very creative, the way that candidate produces is very different. But in whatever we're hiring for, we need someone who can produce. So, and we need someone who can problem solve because we know that the world is complicated and we need people who can work well with others, whether it's supervisors, colleagues, customers, or clients. So I want you to go into your interview knowing that these master themes are very likely to come up. And I want you to walk in with stories that you are ready to tell that speak to these master themes. So I, when I work with students, I tell them, come up with maybe three stories, about ways that you can deliver and you can produce, come up with three talking points, three stories that you can tell that talk about your ability to problem solve and three stories. And, and that means that when you hear a question in real time, you can hear that question and say, oh, this question is about my ability to work with others. I'm gonna tell the story about how my previous role, my coworker and I did boom, boom, and boom. All right. And now, will you be able to, and, and when you come up with these stories, folks, you're not memorizing them like monologues in a school play. Rather, it's just, this is, this is a piece of my experience I can lean on and use to talk about these master themes. And oftentimes, if you use this model that, that those of us in career advising call the STAR method, it'll keep you on track. Your responses need to be able to guide your listener through, here's the situation. When I was a customer sales representative at Verizon Wireless, then walk them through your task. I was responsible for boom, boom, and boom. Walk them through the A of your actions. And then you might say at the end of it, and I'm pleased to say that as a result of, of my efforts, this happened. Now, you don't walk them through and say, first, let's discuss my situation. Next, let's discuss my task. It's going to be a natural, fluid conversation. But within your own mind, you're using this as a framework. And it does two things, folks. Number one, it keeps you on track. Because let's be honest, in an interview, there's a certain degree of pressure on our shoulders, and it can be overwhelming. This, the STAR method keeps you on track as an individual, and it gives the hiring team exactly what they need to hear. No more, no less. Oftentimes, maybe a two-minute response is enough. If you respond to interview questions and you're done in only 20 seconds, 
you've lost an opportunity to really tell a compelling story. Then on the flip side, if you speak for like five minutes, you've said too much. So two minutes, and you might want to practice that, you know, record yourself on your phone, uh, but, but a little bit of practice goes a long way. All right, y'all, that, that brings me now to the end. This admittedly was a, was a fast flyover, but remember, number one, get in touch with your VIPs. Understand who you are, and if that's the piece of it that you want to lean into, let your friends at Job Club know. Number two, your brand. Are you thinking carefully about how you're putting yourself out there and what you want to be known for? Come back to those two anchor words and see where that takes you. Number three, remember what I told you about resumes. Think carefully about templates. Build bullet points that pass the so what test. And last but not least, get ready for your interview. Remember, of all the tons of questions they could ask you, it's oftentimes only three master themes that they're really driving at. And let those three master themes guide the stories that you tell and use the STAR method to keep yourself focused. That is my career advising best practice in a very quick nutshell. Um, and that brings me to my close. We have a minute or two, perhaps. If, if there are questions, I'd love to hear from you. Um, but otherwise, here's what I, I want to end the way I began, which is to say for all of us, every, everyone here in this room and everyone listening online, we all know that finding our right fit and finding where we want to land, it's a journey, it's a process, it's overwhelming, it's exciting, it's all the things. Uh, but those of you right now who are actively searching, I hope that this information has been helpful to you and thank you for carving out a few minutes of your day this morning to spend with me and to spend with us. We have a minute or so for questions. If you have a question, Absolutely. please put it in the chat box now. Also, share your feedback. Love that chat box with some awesome feedback right. for Josh. I always learn so much, and we really appreciate you presenting today, Josh. Great, great content. Well, it's it's my pleasure, and thank you for the invitation. Feedback in there, definitely a lot to think about. Good crash course. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, I, I had to say when, when I developed this presentation, a, an earlier version of this talk was given to the, um, to some some an audience on campus, and I went into it worried that I was trying to you know I want to hit a lot of content, but yes, it's a crash course, <laughs> and and my hope is that it will help you decide where your efforts where you might want to spend a little bit of time. You might think, I feel, I feel great about my brand, but let's level up on my resume. Or I didn't know that that was an approach I could take to resumes uh, or to interviews. Or you might be thinking, whoa, I don't know what, I haven't thought about my brand. So these are all pieces of the puzzle. And, and, and folks like me, folks like Caroline and Amanda uh, are here to help. And, and uh, it's our pleasure to do so. Well, folks, I will, uh, unless there are any other comments or thoughts, I will turn it back over to my colleagues here. And again, thank you for the invitation and your time. Thank you so much. All righty, so let's see here. All right, so thank you again, Josh. This was very, very good, very good information. And uh, we thank you again uh, for speaking here today at Job Club. Oh, sorry, let's go. All righty, and of course, um, I, didn't, I don't know, I think I asked, did the audience, did you have any questions? Anyone in the audience have any questions? Okay. Okay, so, um, Anybody hiring? Okay, I'm not sure if, if we have anyone in the chat that would like to share any information about job leads, uh, feel free to list those in the chat box. And um, if not, I know we have, I believe it's Gerald from State Farm that will come up and, uh, did you, did you want to come up and speak or you're okay? Okay. I can do you want to come up? Okay. Okay. All righty. All righty. So we'll have Gerald from State Farm uh, come up and tell us about uh, job leads. Well, good morning. Uh, where, where's the camera coming from? 
Oh, all right. Well, listen, I just kind of look at that. Hey, good morning. My name is Jerry Galinsky. I'm with State Farm. I'm an executive here from the agency uh, side of our business. Uh, I was so happy to see people here, but I was hoping to see more people here. So, uh, uh, so welcome to everybody that uh, was able to join this uh, online. I, I tell you, the uh, the gentleman I, I was going to try and meet him did a great job, fantastic job. And so, uh, I've looked at a ton of resumes over my career, and I, I would tell you he's right on point with with how we kind of evaluate resumes and and, and so forth. So let me just kind of give you a, a, just a quick overview of of, uh, of what I want to talk to you about today with State Farm. So, uh, you know, State Farm is is one of the most recognized uh, names within the marketplace and certainly across the uh, country, both in, in uh, what we do in terms of insurance and financial services, but also in, in terms of our community involvement, uh, our philanthropic giving, uh, as well as uh, our agent presence within the communities that we serve. So, um, I would just offer to you today that if you are uh, interested in a career with a dynamic company that has a tremendous community-based purpose, that has a variety of offerings for you, no matter what your interest, then I think State Farm is a place for you. Now, my involvement and interest in State Farm is, is uh, exclusively on the agency and the sales side of the business. So if you're thinking sales, marketing, uh, customer service, uh, entrepreneurism, I'm the person to talk to, whether it's locally or across the entire country, I'll get you in touch with the right people. But, you know, if you're sitting out there today and you're, you know, you have an accounting uh, background or computer background or, or a legal background, I can get you connected uh, to folks so you can explore those, uh, those opportunities. And for a real quick reference, uh, if you go to statefarm.com, and, and you look on uh, the careers um, uh, location, uh, there will be two choices, be an agent or be a corporate partner. Uh, so if you're looking for sales opportunities, I said, come to me, but if you wanna go into the be an agent, you can learn a lot more. If you're looking at uh, all the other jobs, marketing, actuary, computers, whatever it might be, go to be a computer partner, pick your category, and you will see the openings uh, that are available all across the country. So, um, uh, but listen, um, I will leave my information with the folks here, but you can find me to that gentleman's way. Find me on LinkedIn, connect with me there. Uh, even if we just do a, a virtual chat or, or a coffee, or you have a, uh, even a son or daughter, uh, cousin, friend uh, that might be interested that you know of, I'll be happy to talk to them and we can talk about what might be next for you. So again, uh, welcome all of us virtually. Thank you to the folks at UK for doing this. Uh, such a great service that you provide the uh, community and, and the UK partnership. So thank you. Thank all right. You. You back. All right. Thank you, Jerry. All righty. So let's see here. Oh, oh sorry. All righty. So, okay, here to talk about our job couples facilitators. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Fayette County Corporate Extension. Um, uh, there are, of course, uh, several different extension offices across across Kentucky. Uh, a great place to go in and um, kind of go in and learn about nutrition and gardening and several other things here. And, of course, you can find more out about our Fayette County Extension. Well, not just our Fayette County Extension offices, but other extension offices um, at um, a HTTP Fayette.ca.uky.edu. Once again, a great way to learn about, just take some courses, some classes, a good way to network. So uh, feel free to visit that website. And we are, well, I should say Fayette County Extension offices also on Facebook. Alrighty, so UK Human Resources, um, I'm here to give some updates on STEPS. Once again, my name is Nicole Waite, and I actually work in STEPS as an uh, HR employment specialist. Uh, STEPS is a great, great way to get your foot in the door with the University of Kentucky. Um, we actually have part-time and full-time positions at the University of Kentucky, and although they're temporary, many of these jobs uh, are extended, so they're not just short periods of time. Uh, some of them uh, go on... At, 
for even a year, six months, a year, even longer. Many other jobs do transition into regular positions. Um, and if they do not, I like to also uh, spread the word that these skills are transferable. You do go in and you're learning uh, in live time, you're learning universities, uh, systems, uh, you're getting any type of training that a regular employee would get. Um, that, you know, of course, that benefits the department as well as the employee. So please take advantage and visit our website there. Uh, I actually have a couple of jobs that we're recruiting for now. Um, several different departments are recruiting for administrative support positions, patient relations and um, patient, sorry, patient registration and relations positions. And I uh, also have a, uh, on the campus side a program coordinator in African American studies and several research positions on and off campus. Uh, there are many virtual positions as well. I know a lot of people are seeking, especially some students that may be seeking some part time. There is a part time research position out there also. So please take out time to visit our website. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you would like. Uh, and of course, if you visit our website, any other recruiters listed, feel free to reach out to them. Alrighty, so let's see here, UK Career Services, we're here to help you. So of course you can learn more about alum, um, of career services. Uh, visit our website here, www.ukalum.net slash careers, career services, talk about some resume writing, schedule some meetings for some in-person, um, I should say some one-on-one -on -one in-person um, discussion about resumes, cover letters, your LinkedIn profile, et cetera, all the different things that Josh was talking about today. Uh, this would, some great pointers, some great pointers, and uh, you could go in more depth with uh, scheduling a time to talk to someone in that, uh, in the career services department. Okay, so next time at Job Club, which is February 22nd, we'll be talking about job search tips and strategies from a panel of regional recruiters and HR professionals. Alrighty, this will be a really good one. Um, so bring your notepad as you always will. I mean, always do, I should say, and pens uh, or your tablets, whatever it is, take some really good notes. Uh, this is always very interesting to get different points of view from different people on the panels. So we look forward to seeing you then. And thank you all so much for attending Job Club.